Hi and welcome to Cherry Talks Movies. This time around I've got a bit of spy stuff for you. 1960s secret agent movies were a fantastic world where some copied James Bond and others preceded him. So let's get started and look at OSS 117, also known as OSS Sans Decept. The cinema is full of secret agents, from James Bond to George Smiley, Matt Helm to Derek Flint, Lorraine Broughton to Ethan Hunt. Before them in literature there was Adolf Verloc in Joseph Conrad's 1907 novel The Secret Agent, which in 1936 was made into the Alfred Hitchcock movie Sabotage. In 1927 we got W. Somerset Maugham's Ashenden, which again in 1936 was made into another Hitchcock spy movie called Secret Agent. And in 1948, just after the war, a French writer called Jean Bruce created a spy of his own, an American agent from Louisiana who had French ancestry, Hubert Bonisseur de la Bath, also known as OSS Sans Decep. Remember, this was four years before a certain English journalist got sick of married life and wrote Casino Royale. OSS Sans Decep also hit cinema screens five years before James Bond. In 1956's OSS Sans Decep is not dead. All up, Jean Bruce produced 91 OSS Sans Decep novels between 1948 and the 26th of March 1963 when he crashed his Jaguar sports car and died. His wife continued the novels with collaborators until 1992. Hubert Bonisseur de la Bath is a tall, athletic, wisecracking, non-smoking secret agent who usually works undercover. In the 1960s, after Dr. No hit cinemas like a nuclear weapon, André Unibel, a master glass artist turned film director, produced five OSS Sans Decept movies, four of which he directed. A few years ago, Kino Lauber released all of the 1960s OSS Sans Decept movies on DVD. And I've watched them all. They're pretty good. Yes, they're all in French with subtitles, which may be a problem for dyslexic people. But they're worth checking out if you're okay with subtitles. The five movies are OSS Sans Decept is Unleashed from 1963, OSS Sans Decept Panic in Bangkok from 1964, which in English was also called Shadow of Evil for no good reason. In 1965, we got OSS Sans Decept Mission for a Killer. In 1966, we got OSS Sans Decept Mission to Tokyo. And in 1968, we got OSS Sans Decept Double Agent. In the five movies, we get three different actors playing Hubert. The first one was Kerwin Matthews in OSS Sans Decept is Unleashed and in Panic in Bangkok. Matthews is solid playing the role. His Hubert is charming, funny, and he moves well in the fight scenes, a skill Kerwin Matthews may have picked up in his gigs as Simbad and Gulliver fighting against Ray Harryhausen monsters. In OSS On Set is Unleashed, the only black and white film among the five in the box set, really benefits from location shooting in Corsica, particularly in and around a coastal town called Bonifacio. Hubert is sent to find a missing agent who is reconnoitering some mysterious activity around an underground grotto on the coast. Of course, there's an enemy weapon there designed to fritz atomic submarines. This one has solid action, adept underwater cinematography and fight choreography that for me, beats Ricky Browning's work on Thunderball two years later, by every measure except scale. It's all done on a much smaller scale than Thunderball. One of the delightful things about all five of the movies is the amount of tradecraft and social engineering Hubert uses to think his way through or around obstacles or enemies. It's all quite impressive. He outthinks his enemies as much as he murders them dead with machine guns. Kerr and Matthew's second outing as a character is even better. Panic in Bangkok has beautifully lush colour and he uses the locations in and around the Thai capital beautifully. Full marks to the location scouts here. In fact, it uses the Thai locations much better than Eon Productions did a decade later with The Man with the Golden Gun. He really gives you a documentary look at the country as it was in the 1960s. Robert Hossein plays a psychiatrist come guru called Dr. Sin with two ends, who is supposedly Indian, although Robert Hussein's parents were from Azerbaijan, not India. Dr. Sin has a Malthusian plan to spread plagues across the world to reduce the population of undesirables to manageable levels. His beautiful sister Leela, played by Italian actress Pier Angeli, helps Hubert thwart her brother's devious plans. OSS Sondicept and his local allies, who are treated as people and not as stereotypes, attack Dr. Sin's base, which lies beneath a Thai temple complex in the hinterland. Again, there are high production values here. 
and Kua Matthews settles into the role even better than he did the first time around. During the production of Panic in Bangkok, director André Unabel discovered a pharmaceutical executive called Frederick Stafford and decided he was going to be the next OSS Son Decept, in spite of this unusual origin. Frederick Stafford is solid as the character in the third of these movies. He's charismatic, he's athletic, he's charming, and unlike Cohen Matthews, who was heterosexual, OSS Son Decept Mission for a Killer takes Hubert Bonisseur de la Bath to one of the great Eurospy movie locations, Rio de Janeiro. At the time, French audiences loved movies that were set in Rio. There was a musical called Copacabana Palace in the early 1960s, and like Jean-Paul Belmondo's from L'Homme de Rio from 1964, it was incredibly successful in the French language market. OSS Son Decept is sent to Rio and later Bahia on the trail of a new narcotic drug distilled from a previously unknown Amazonian plant. This drug makes people extremely vulnerable to hypnotic suggestion and they are being used as suicide bombers by a neo-fascist organisation that plans to assassinate all the political leaders in South America and take over the entire continent. Milene de Moggio plays the sister of the owner of a large rural ranch who is weaponized to kill OSS Son Decept, but fails and becomes his ally as he finds and takes out the fascist's secret base of the jungle. Again, we've got superb locations filmed in a way that respects the local cultures. The cities and the jungle are shot beautifully in this film. It has solid action and terrific set pieces, and production design is and production design is beautiful to look at. The secret source with all of the first four OSS Son Decept movies in this collection is the atmospheric music of Michel Marnier, who did a lot of kind of B-picture soundtracks in the 1960s. Marlene de Mojo was a beautiful and charming actress and does a great job of being the mandatory love interest without being a helpless female. She fights back when the bad guys try to kidnap her. That brings us to Frederick Stafford's second and last film as OSS Son Sep. Mission to Tokyo is the best of the five movies. André Unabel stays on as producer, but Michel Bozrand directs this one. It's the first OSS Son Sep movie not to be based on a novel by Jean Bruce, even though there were 91 of them to select from. The story was written by someone else who was not unfamiliar with spy movies. Terence Young, the director of the first James Bond film, Dr. No, wrote the story for Mission to Tokyo. Allied bases are being destroyed by a new weapon that mimics the radar signature of the F-107 fighter jet. Uber is sent to Tokyo because information is being given to the unknown enemy by a female cipher clerk in the US Embassy, a woman called Maria Wilson, played by Marina Vladi. Uber goes undercover as Maria's estranged husband and uses her to follow the trail back to the enemy. Among his allies is a Japanese woman called Tetsuko, played by Jitsuko Yoshimura, who takes him through the nightclubs and izakais of Shinjuku, some rural villages, and a tour of 1960s Showa-era Japan. We get to iconic locations like the Sensoji Temple in Asakusa, and it hasn't changed a lot between the 1960s and when I visited it in 2019. All of the locations in Tokyo and Kyoto, and in one single scene, Dotonbori and Osaka, are beautifully shot. This is documentary-style shooting, shot on location with real crowds around the actors as they do their spy stuff. A year later, Eon Productions made You Only Live Twice, which gives us a really watered-down version of the Japan we see in this film. OSS Son Decept has an epic fight with a Japanese bodyguard who's the size of Andre the Giant, as well as swordsmen, judo masters and other assorted thugs. And there's also some plausible gadgetry used, and a few devices that were later borrowed for at least one Roger Moore James Bond film. Again, Frederick Stafford delivers the goods, and this one, while it doesn't have the Playboy magazine style of contemporaneous James Bond films, and it compares favourably with the Bond films at the tail end of Sean Connery's portrayal of the character. Frederick Stafford went off to star in one of Alfred Hitchcock's last films, Topaz, and so Hispanic American actor John Gavin came into play with OSS Son Decept in the last of the character's 1960s films. OSS Son Decept Murder for Sale, aka OSS Son Decept Double Agent, is unfortunately the least of the five. It has some really underused locations in Rome and in Tunisia, and it over relies on sets for most of the action scenes. 
including a rooftop battle of surpassing clumsiness. John Gavin, who later became Ronald Reagan's American ambassador to Mexico, was a pretty bland actor. He was good looking, he moved well, but he was resolutely generic. He had no plausibility in the role, and in the moments when he's supposed to look rightly amusing, he comes across, at least to me, as annoyingly smug. However, there is a solid supporting cast, including Margaret Lee, Luciana Paluzzi, several years after she appeared in Thunderball, and Rosa Neri. In this case, for the bad guy, we have Kurt Jurgens playing the nameless leader of a group of mercenary assassins who has an interest in medical ways of ensuring that his killers do the job. His character is coded as being gay for no reason except to make him an evil pervert. And it's clear that he and his bearded henchmen have, to quote Billy Paul, a thing going on. This is Kurt Jurgens a decade before he played Stromberg in The Spy Who Loved Me. And to be really honest... I like him in this role better than I did in the James Bond film. Stromberg was one of the most underwritten boss villains in 007 history. This film may have been hampered by the fact it had three directors, Renzo Serrato, Jean-Pierre de Sagnat, and André Urnbel. And it's definitely my least favourite. After the journey, I went on with the first four movies, and I know saying it's a journey is a cliché. OSS Sondisep Double Agent feels like a shitty dessert after a surprisingly good four-course meal. There were two more OSS Sondi Sep movies made in the 1970s and they weren't particularly successful or particularly good. In 2006, Michel Hazanovicius reinvented OSS Sondi Sept as a comedic French fool with Jean de Jardin as Hubert OSS in OSS Sondi Sept Cairo Nest of Spies. This was followed up in 2009 with OSS Sondi Sep Lost in Rio. And both of them are beautiful pastiches of not only OSS Sondi Sep movies, but also James Bond and the whole 1960s playboy philosophy. Jean Jules Jardin is fantastic in the role. The last movie in the series, OSS Sondi Sep from Africa with Love, in 2021 is, as we say in Australia, fucking awful. Now this Kino Lorber box set is definitely worth getting for the first four of the five movies. They're adept and interesting action flicks which take an almost documentary look at their well-chosen 1960s locations. And when you compare and contrast them with James Bond movies, there are aspects of them that, for me at least, exceed the 007 films. You should have this in your collection if you're interested in spy movies. It really is something special. And getting five movies for about 50 bucks Australian was totally worth it. I've been looking for these ones for a while. And I'm really glad that I found them because they're my kind of thing. And to be honest with you, they have, in many ways, less cringe than 1960s James Bond films. And that surprised me when I watched them. So that's it for this time around. I've got another video, which is going to be an unboxing I'm doing later in the week. And then, of course, on Saturday, I've got Science Fiction Saturdays with more goodness there. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Tell me what you think of these and whether you get them because they're totally worth it. I'll leave a link in the description for where you can get them on Amazon. You can also support the channel by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash terrytalksmovies. I'm doing a giveaway that ends in May for the Patreon supporters and I've been told by Umbrella Entertainment they're sending me some more things to do as giveaways for the patrons so it may well be worth your while to become one of them. So until next time when I'm talking about some interesting films I'm unboxing including a 1960s children's favourite watch some good movies watch some bad movies have a go at some different spy movies and I'll catch you next time.